Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're gonna to be comparing two very, very budget-friendly IEMs. We're gonna be comparing the $10 corks against the $20 shoes. Both are from Moondrop, though there is a little bit of sort of an additional thing here. And that's that I put Moondrop's own spring IEM tips on the corks. And these are about a $12 pair of tips. So that brings these up to about the same price at about $20. And I actually think that they're pretty competitive and good at different things. Thus the comparison. So today we're going to be looking at which one you should buy depending on which preference you have or sound. Personally, I think that these are some of the best performing IEMs for their price range. And that's saying a lot because this is an extremely competitive price range where a lot of things are starting to get pretty good. It's $20. It's hot up in that region. Now, the first thing to go over is obviously going to be build. Right out of the box, the shoes are going to be far more impressive. They feel like a good value for $20. Whereas the corks out of the box feel like $10, they don't feel great. They are a very small, very plastic design. Uh, the shoes feel a lot more substantial. They feel and just look more impressive than the price tag would suggest. Whereas the visual aesthetics of the corks are very nice being this kind of clear, transparent plastic design. It just doesn't feel all that impressive. Though I think that when it comes to fitment, the corks are actually better. The shoes do have a forced over ear design. They are not an ambidextrous style fit like the uh, corks are. These things you definitely feel in your ear a lot more. They have a little bit of a heft to them, which gives them the feeling and appearance of uh, being more expensive than their price tag would suggest. But it's also a slight downside for comfort compared to the corks. Uh, the corks can be either over ear or just hang like a traditional kind of, you know, in your headphone would. But if you do wrap them around your ear, they fit just fine there too. But they're so lightweight, once you put them in, if you get comfortable tips with them, you barely feel these things at all. And they don't give your ears listening fatigue quite as easily as the chews do. Though I do think it's notable to say that both are pretty good and don't really cause listening fatigue issues in general. Now the cable quality is identical, but the shoes do look a little bit cooler because they have kind of this slightly opaque smoked out design. I think it looks really neat. And it is notable that neither design has a removable cable. They are both inbuilt into it. So if the cable breaks, you gotta get a new pair. Let's talk about sound quality differences. And there are many, these are very different IEMs. They are not similar really at all. I would say that the Chew is more in line with the rest of Moondrop's sound signature, whereas the Corks actually seem like an outlier, but in a good way and offers a very differing version of sound being a lot more mid-range focused. For resolution, which is the first thing I wanna tackle because it's the most impressive part of the Chew's performance, the Chew wins for resolution all day long. This is a combination of, I think, just raw driver speed, but also its frequency response being a little bit more forward in the trouble response versus the corks, which are a little bit laid off in the trouble and a little bit laid off in the sub bass and more focused on mid range and mid bass performance. Now for the money, the resolution of both is pretty good, but I feel like the chews are really a standout even for $20 for resolution capability. I kind of go back and forth here on the trouble response in terms of frequency response preferences. The chew is sort of a you know, it's a slightly boosted, almost a tiny bit of a V-shaped uh, style sound signature. So it's got a little bit of mid bass and a little bit of upper mid range and a little bit of a kind of lower treble response. And it's got sort of a peak there and it can come across a little bit harsh from time to time, depending on the music. Now, if you're listening to perfectly recorded tracks, then it's not going to be a problem, but almost nobody listens to perfectly recorded tracks all the time. So if you're exploring modern rap, rock, or uh, pop, you are going to run into a little bit of a, a brightness every once in a while, depending on the music. Whereas the corks, you never really do that. Now, the downside to the corks is that they are a little bit dull in the trouble response. They don't really have a lot of top end finishings to a lot of instruments. So sometimes things like guitars can seem a little bit unpolished and unrefined. Again, we're talking about $10 for the IEMs and $20 for the full kit if you want to get the tips as well. But that is a notable downside of the corks. Now, I think mid-range here is going to be the deciding factor for most people. Personally, I like the mid-range of the corks a little bit better. I think they're more kind of 
full sounding on the lower ranges and they are less fatiguing on the upper mid range. And because of this, they come across very smooth and very full and fairly complete, especially for the price tag. And how filled out this mid range sounds to me is very impressive considering even more expensive IEMs. Now I do feel a personal responsibility to call out the fact that I think that my preferences for mid-range differ a little bit from some of the more established uh, frequency response curve targets that people seem to prefer. I think the Chew is a little bit more in line with it kind of your typical IEM target sound, but I personally preferred the corks a little bit more. The way that the true sound to me is a little bit lacking in the lower registries. They don't sound super full. They do have this precise imaging and this way of cutting through a lot of the background instruments when things get a little bit busy with that resurgence of the upper mid range, but they kind of just sound like a typical IEM for mid range for me. And I don't think that IEMs really tend to have the best mid-range performance. I really hearken a lot of my mid-range preferences back to the old school HD 600 kind of style of vocal performance where it's just very full, it sounds very lush, and it's very enjoyable. The lower mid-range for the Chews just sounds a little bit anemic compared to what I would prefer. Whereas the Corks, I think, fill out that area a little bit more. Bass response. Neither are really bass heavy headphones. And if you're looking for bass, I wouldn't really look at Moondrop to do it even at higher price categories. They tend to focus more on a clean sound signature. And that's what you get with both of these IEMs. You don't really get a super muddy or bloaty bass, which is good, but you also don't get incredible sub bass response either. So it's not a strong suit for both these headphones. I wouldn't expect that from either of them. That being said, I do think that both headphones have enough to fill out the mid bass department especially when you're finishing off instruments. A good example of this would be the Heart Part 5 from Kendrick Lamar. There's kind of a lower note uh, piano hit that repeats itself a lot in the beginning of that song. Both of these sound fairly good, though AB comparing both headphones back and forth, it's very clear that the cork uh, has a little bit less bass than the uh, Chew does. The Chew is a little bit thumpier in that mid-bass department. If I'm being super critical and kind of an asshole, both are a little bit bloated in the mid-bass, but it's definitely not bad and certainly not bad for their price range. Imaging and Soundstage. The imaging definitely seems more precise on the Chew because of that trouble response. Uh, the Soundstaging also seems a little bit wider. You hear a little bit more of the air frequencies, a little bit more of the environmental information on the Chews than you do the Corks. The Corks are not bad. And in some categories of imaging, I actually think they perform better. Mostly that mid-range vocal forwardness, you get a bigger, fuller sounding vocalist. It sounds more realistic, I think, on the corks for mid-range specifically, but everything else I think is an advantage to the Chew. So my conclusion is very simple. I think both of these IEMs for $20 are an incredible value and they sound really, really good for 20 bucks. This is definitely within the category of things that I would consider to be very low risk given the price and very very high upside given the sound quality. And these $10 corks, some people might even consider them disposable, so they might be worth using as good workout headphones with fairly decent sound quality. I think they would fit that role very nicely. If you are a mid-range focused person, I would suggest the corks. I think that the mid-range for $20 is excellent. The Chews definitely perform better to a target and have better bass response and better treble response and are of higher resolutions. So if you prefer those things, then I think the Chew is gonna be the way to go. So yeah, I was both personally impressed and uh, kind of shocked to not only see how good these were for 10 and $20, but pretty impressed that they were at least a little bit competitive in some areas given uh, the, the price difference. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, my name is Josh, signing off. Peace.